Hi there. So, I'm not really good at the whole talking to myself in my room sort of thing, but I need to practice because uh, I kind of want to be a VTuber at some point after I build my new PC. So I figured, what better way to do that than make a tutorial on how to make an app? Make a tutorial on how to make a honk avatar. Yeah. Now, there aren't really a whole lot of these sorts of things. At least none that I could find. So, I figured I should try to make one. Let's see how this turns out. Alright, so, say you already have Honk. Great, you should. It's a great program made by a great person by the name of Dream Toaster. But, uh, you can't exactly use it unless you have a character to animate with it. And that's where the artsy fartsy stuff comes in. Now, if you're not much of an artist, you could always commission somebody to do it. That's always valid. But if you are, then that's kind of the fun part. Because you can make these avatars in any art style you want. It's one of the great things about it. And with Honk in particular, uh, you can get your characters to lip sync a bit too, as you probably saw at the beginning. Uh, I'd have her down in the corner, but this old crap top can barely even handle the drawing program itself. <laughs> so, I suppose we should get started. Now the canvas size doesn't matter at all. At least not from what I could tell. So I'm just going to go with my default. Oh, and the program I use is Fire Alpaca. I use it for just about anything art related. But you could probably go with anything that can save a transparent PNG. Photoshop, Krita, maybe Clip Studio, that sort of thing. Hell, even GIMP if people... Do people still use GIMP? Anyway, hardest part is going to be coming up with a character. Let's see what I can come up with. Alrighty then, so we got our our little guy. I don't know why I picked a raccoon. I just... It's 1.31 in the morning and I am incapable of coherent thought at the moment. But, hey, he's cute. So, got our little sketch done. Now we just gotta work on the line art. But, when you do the line art and the coloring, leave the eyes and the mouth blank. Just basically don't give them a face. You could give them a nose if you wanted to, but uh, you know, the eyes and the mouth, just leave it off.
You know, I don't even know if raccoons sit like that. It's good enough for tutorial purposes, though. <laughs> Alright. So, we can merge the line art with the coloring. It doesn't really matter now. So now, we can add the eyes. Now, they have to be on a separate layer, otherwise it's going to be really hard to animate. Let's see. I'm going to just hide the colors. Or, Whoops. I'm just going to lower the opacity on that so I can see the sketch. And we're just going to draw the eyes. Eh. Won't even bother going to time lapse for this. They're just going to be... cute little oval things. Now what color should we give our raccoon for eyes? How about yellow? That's That sounds nice. Like a nice bright yellow. Maybe a little redder. Bloop, bloop. Protect the alpha and then give it a little a little spice. Give it some of this and some of that. And let's add just a little something something just down here. Why not? Cute! He has no pupils. Alright, anyway. <clears throat> then we do the same thing for the mouth. Again, why did I show up the sketch? Also on its own separate layer. Just give him a little, you know. <laughs> Now we can stop lowering that opacity. And it would help to name all the layers just to keep things a little bit organized. So this is going to be sclera, this is going to be body, and this is going to be mouth. Silent. You know, for when the mouth is closed and whatnot. Now, if you want to add following, like, eye tracking for your cursor, you would also put the pupils on a separate layer as well. So let's do that. Just these cute little things. Hide that just to make the coloring easier. That's cute, I guess. Give him a little... Give him a little something something. Uh, might want to put this in the pupil. So that... Clipping doesn't happen as much. <laughs> I'm not used to making characters with sparkly eyes. And that will be... <clears throat> now, we got our little raccoon dude. Now for the different mouths. This is the time consuming part. Because you need to make a mouth shape for pretty much every sound. Well, no, not every. You can kind of cut corners. But most importantly is definitely the mouth closed and probably the mouth open. For the mouth open, 
Uh, that would be like A A Ah. Just gonna give him Ah. Let's give him cute little thingies, why not? I just noticed some pixels that aren't colored. Anyway. Give him a little of this. His little tongue. And then on a layer underneath we can color it. Make sure to keep it named correctly, just to make things easier on you. <laughs> That's cute. Okay. We also need E, which is kind of like this one, except it's a bit more stretched out, I would say. I'm just going to put all this, all these mouth shapes in a folder just because organization is kind of my thing. Okay, let's go with E. Like that. Steal the colors from this one because I'm lazy. Merge that together and that is E. Next we can go with CH. Ch. This one... I kind of use sort of the same mouth shape as E. kind of teeth we gonna give him. He's a raccoon, so let's just give him funny cartoon shark teeth. I think it's cute at least. Next we can go with F. This one's always kind of hard for me to draw. I'm not sure why. And then we can just color that in white. Because it's basically your tooth, your teeth biting your lower lip a little. F. Let's go L. I'm kind of really lazy with this one, but it's kind of funny. I just have their little tongue sticking out. Get some of the color from one of the other mouth shapes. Put it on the layer underneath your line art so you don't get funny little edges like that. And we have L. Let's see. L, F, C, H, E, A. I think that just leaves O. And the reason I keep bringing up the silent mouth is just so I can get the placement kind of right. just so they're not bouncing all over the place.
I guess that kind of looks like O. Emphasis on kind of. Now, this isn't all the mouth shapes you can use, but, uh, I'm a little lazy piece of something something, so those are the only ones I'm gonna make. So basically, next, take all these extras, and you can you can crop it just to like reduce how big the image is. And you can save it. However, you're kinda gonna need to find a place to save it. So... You go into your characters folder in... Now, if you weren't a dummy like me, you'd extract everything from Honk into one singular folder, but I accidentally extracted each piece onto my desktop. So, yeah. Anyway, they give you this nice little batch file that you can just double click. It'll run a little thing, and then it'll make yourself a nice little folder. And you can rename this to whatever you want. I kind of try to keep the naming scheme the same, so this would be 8 Raccoon and you don't really have to mess with anything in here just go to images, you'll see it is very empty, very quiet and this is where we will save everything for our little dude here so for this one you would save Go into our honk folder to our raccoon images, and this will be body. And make sure to save everything as a PNG, otherwise honk might have a hard time recognizing it. Save. And make sure it's transparent. You don't want this funky little square around them. Unless you do, who am I to judge? All right, so that is just the body. Now, for these fellas. The eyes, if you want them to blink, you'll have a, you'll have to have another layer, another separate image. And what I like to do is just give him, you know, the basic little, you know, that cute shit. And then just hide the sclera. Happy little dude. And I will call this Blink. Okay. So. We take these. And we highlight, try to get as close to the image as, to the, like, to words, as close to the pieces as possible. You can even subtract from it if you want. Oh. Which one is it? Alt? No. It has to be control. Yeah. There. And the sclera is what's selected the sclera layer Oof. and we'll copy and then new via clipboard and it's just the eyes and we're going to save this as eyes PNG save transparent and we go back to the body image and without deselecting anything, we'll go to the blink layer, copy, back to the eyes, don't touch anything, just paste, and then hide the sclera layer, 
Control shift s to save as, and this is blink.png. I'm sure it doesn't have to be all whacked out like this, but you can close that because we are done with the eyes. No, we're not. I'm stupid. Open recent blink. Just so we got that canvas size. We gotta bring the pupils in too. Oh wait. No, we don't. I'm not paying attention. Okay. As for the pupils, if you want them to follow you, your cursor rather, you'll need to put them separate. So this new via clipboard. I don't think it matters whether you label this as left or right. I kind of just do it from the perspective of the character, so this is pupil L. And then pupil R. And now that we're done with that, we can get into the mouth. What I prefer to do is make these all visible so that I can put one big square around it, around all the shapes. And that will be the size of the canvas we paste all the layers to. So. Copy this, mouth silent, without deselecting, go to the next one, in our case it's AA, paste it in, hide the, f hide the closed mouth, control shift S, AA and repeat for all of the mouth shapes. This one E remembering to hide the layer before it so it doesn't turn into a big ol' mess. Alright, that should be all of the layers, and then we just gotta put this bad boy into honk. So, great job making it this far, welcome to honk. Now, I chose the green background because, well, it works better with OBS. Does that even... <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go into the actual interface of Honk. Now, you won't have YV here. You will have Grombit. That doesn't really matter though. We're gonna go down and we're gonna find our little raccoon friend.
bloop. Now it's gonna take a second. Especially with uh such advanced hardware as mine. Normally that doesn't uh, happen, so I'm just going to delete all this. I didn't actually expect that to save. Okay, so we're going to go up to Create Layer, Body, and here's our little dude. You can zoom him in, zoom him way out, zoom him way in, whatever you want. Okay, so Let's give this little fella some eyes. Go to Create Layer, give him his eyes, set Render Order, and we're going to put this right above the body layer, which is at layer 0, so this guy gets layer 1. And now he has a nice little set of blank yellow peepers. Let's make them a little less blank by going to our image pupil L. Put that right in the center just to, you know, help with the eye tracking a little bit, I think. And since the eyes, the sclera, are layer 1, we'll set the pupil to layer 2. And then we do the... well, no. Let's get this eye to track first before we go to the other one. Look at cursor. Since this is a, I'd consider to be a tall oval, I'll choose Look Tall Oval. And then we're going to up this just a bit. Let's go to like 30-ish, 29, sure. And let's just kind of click out of the window. And yeah, it's tracking pretty good. That uh, bounce is kind of distracting though, so I'm just going to turn that down. Alright. Next, we will select the pupil, edit sprite, go over to blink here, and all the way at the top you'll find invis. You click that, and so every time the character blinks, which we haven't set up yet, the pupil will vanish. Just so it's not, you know, sticking out and staring into your soul even when his eyes are closed. We should probably set that up, huh? Let's go to the sclera, edit sprites, blink, and choose the image you saved for blink. Lastly, let's add his right pupil and do the same thing. So this is render order 2, drag it in place, try to go inside. there we go, kind of near the center. Edit sprites, blink, invis, close, look at cursor, tall oval, look distance, Why that no do? Why you no do? Look tall oval. There we go. Let's put that, well 30 worked last time, so let's go to 30. Click out of the window. Yeah! That looks good to me. As you can see, the pupils vanish when the character blinks, as intended. Alright. Now all we have to do is add his mouth. Create layer, mouth silent. You can put this, well, wherever you want really, but under his nose is usually the best place for it. Render order. This doesn't really matter if you have a f such few layers like we do. So let's just put it right on layer 1. 
just so it's over the body. And now we go to the lip syncing, which is almost exactly like the blinking. Edit sprites, and you can see all these little sections where we will choose a different speech sprite. So for P, I usually just go with the silent because we don't have all of them. If you want to put in the eff extra effort to make all of the different shapes, then by all means, I'm just lazy. <laughs> Alright, silent. For F, we have the F. TH, I usually just use L. D, I use CH, because it's the teeth clicking together, sort of. For G, I'll just go with E. CH, of course, CH, as well as S. N and L. L. R. I'll just use O for that one. Train in the background. For A, we have one for that. For E, we have one for that as well. I, I'll just use E. And then for both O and U, I will use O. Now... Okay, so the last two times I tried finishing this little video off, the recording slowed to an absolute crawl. I kind of blame the six or seven year old Walmart laptop that I got from my graduation. So I'm just gonna record this little clip to put at the end, just so you can see uh, the end product of all this work you did. <laughs> anyway, I hope this kind of shows off what this program is capable of. It's just the bare minimum, really, but once you get into, like, other layers and emotes, you can do a lot of stuff, even as just a PNG tuber. And I, uh, I do hope this helped somebody out. Thanks for watching.